Carl Hebert here with part two of the foundation series. If you remember in part one, I showed you how to import and organize your files using Adobe Bridge and Adobe Photo Downloader. In part two, open them up in Camera Raw, go over a few of the settings to be able to eventually open them in Photoshop. First thing you want to do is open up Adobe Bridge. All right, now that we got Bridge open, that not only can you open up Camera Raw files, but you can also open up TIFF and JPEGs and the benefits of doing so. And we're going to go over here and I'm going to show you three images that are all of our same happy beaver, but one's a raw file from Canon, one's a JPEG, and one's a TIFF. We can open up all three of these in Camera Raw and do non-destructive editing before we open the file in Photoshop. The reason why you want to do as much editing as possible in Camera Raw is because, like I said, it's non-destructive. It doesn't change any information in your file, whether it's a RAW file, a JPEG, or a TIFF. It won't change the color information inside that file. So that when you open it up in Photoshop, you have the best possible file that's already been changed in Camera Raw. Now let me show you how to do it. There's a couple ways you can open up a file. If it's a RAW file, you can just double click on it and it will open up within RAW. Or you can do Control R, Command R if you're on a Mac. And on one other way is you can come up to File, Open in Camera Raw. And the last way is you can right click on the file and you can also click Open in Camera Raw. Any one of those will open up a RAW file. For a JPEG or a TIFF, if you double click on it, it's going to open directly in Photoshop. And we don't want to do that. We want to open it up in Camera Raw. So we can use one of the options. We can do Control R, Command R. We can go up to the file and do Open in Camera Raw. Or we can right click on it and go Open in Camera Raw. All right, so now we are going to open all three of our images in Camera Raw. I'm going to select all three and I'm going to use the right click function. And you see right here it says Open in Camera Raw. So I'm going to Open in Camera Raw and you'll see that we have all three files open. We have a RAW file, a JPEG, and a TIFF, all in Camera Raw. Now that you got Camera Raw open, one of the first things you probably want to do is click on the full screen mode, or hit F on your keyboard. And what that will do is fill your entire screen up with Camera Raw to give you more room to work and you'll be able to see the adjustments better. And also up top here you'll see our tool icons, and you can just mouse over them or click on them and find out what they do. We'll go over all of these in a future video. Uh, for now, we're just going over the basics. This is your zoom tool and your hand tool. And over here are your panels. And each tab will open up a different panel. And again, in a future video, we'll go over these tabs. We're going to stick with the basic one for right now. Let's make some adjustments to our happy little beaver here using Camera Raw. Uh, one of the first things we're going to do is adjust the white balance. There's three ways of doing this. One of the first ways is to use the presets that come with Camera Raw. And in this case, this was shot in the shade of a mountain, so we're going to click on shade and see what happens. And if you notice, it warmed it up a little bit. Got a little warmer tint to it. Let's put it back to the as shot. Uh, the second way is we can use these sliders down here to adjust it. If we take this first one, the, the temperature one, if we move it to the right, it's going to make the image warmer. If we go to the left, it's going to make it cooler, add a little blue tint to it. We'll make it a little bit warmer. And this bottom one is tint. If we want, we go to the right, it's going to add a little magenta to it. If we go to the left, it's going to add some green to it. The third way of doing it is to come over here and click on the white balance tool. And that little eyedropper, you move it to a neutral color. And in this case, I'm going to pick white. And I'm going to click on it. And you notice that it did the same thing. It warmed it up and it gave it some magenta. I feel like it gave a little bit too much magenta, so I'm going to go back with the custom and go with the shade. I really like that shade right there. It really did a good job. And maybe just a little bit warmer right there. After we adjust the white balance, we'll adjust the exposure. Exposure affects the entire image. As you go to the right, it makes the image brighter, as if you let more light into your camera. And if you go to the left, it's going to darken it is if you let less light into your camera. This one, I like the exposure just as it was shot, so we're going to leave it right there. Recovery brings details back into your highlights. It can't bring back information that is not there. If you got pure white, it's not going to bring anything back to that white. But in this case, if you look up here, we have a little bit of 
play on the water. And if we move our recovery all the way over, you can see that it brings out some more of that. But at the same time, it kind of muddies up some of this other stuff here. So we want to back that off a little bit because I want to keep that kind of bright up there by bringing in some detail up in this area. Uh, the third one is really great. This is going to help this little happy beaver a lot. We're going to take this slider. We're going to start moving it to the right. It's going to bring the mid shadows out. I mean, just watch the side of this beaver bright right up. It's like we had a fill card. Basically, that's what the fill light is saying. It's almost like if you have a fill card on the dark side, and it's bouncing light into those shadows. And there you go. If you go too far, though, you'll notice it will get kind of hazy, kind of overall fog across the image. So we're going to go right about 50 there. Uh, black will make your shadows darker. The more you move it, you'll see the contrast build up. So that's a little too far, so we'll bring that back so it doesn't blotch it all up there. Right about there. Uh, brightness, as you move it to the right, makes the image brighter. If you go to the left, it makes the image darker. Very simple. There. We'll go a little bit up there. Contrast, as you go to the right, it makes your whites whiter and your blacks blacker. And as you go to the left, it does the opposite. I'll we'll keep it contrasting, make that first stand out. Clarity is kind of like a sharpening. It just makes the image more clear. As you go toward the right, it's kind of adjusting the mid-contrast of the image. So you go all the way over to the right, you notice it really makes the edges sharp, makes them stand out. And if you go to the left, it softens the entire image. Uh, this I don't use all that much because I do a lot of my sharpening in Photoshop. But let's say you weren't going into Photoshop, you just wanted a JPEG to email to somebody. You could use this and really make the image look very sharp. There's also a panel up here called Detail that has sharpening options in it also. Um, the next tab is Vibrance. And Vibrance makes your mild colors brighter. So you take this and you move it to the right and you'll see some of the colors really come out when you do that. It's a little bit too much. You see we have a little blown out color, so to speak, right here. It's got some purple and blues coming in that we don't want. So we'll back that off. We'll probably go about 18 or 20 there just to bring out some color. Saturation is the Mac Daddy. This thing here will really crank up your colors if you move to the right. I mean, look at that. It's like it's on fire. Our beaver's from another planet. And if you go all the way to the left, he becomes back from like the 30s in an old movie. It's all black and white. We'll go here. We just want to bring it up just a little bit. We don't go too far with it. There you have it. We just went over all the sliders in the basic panel to give you a quick oversight of what Camera Raw can do for your file. Now remember, all of these adjustments are non-destructive. This is a raw file, and it's going to save all this information in an XMP file to the side of that file. Now if we were continuing on to Photoshop, we would click on Open Image, and this raw file would open up into Photoshop. But we're going to click on Done instead, and that's going to save the file with the XMP, and we're going to see in Adobe Bridge that it changes the icon to the new version that we created in Camera Raw and also will show us that this file has been worked on right up here. And if we ever wanted to change this in Camera Raw we just have to reopen it in Camera Raw and we'll see all our settings are there and we can make any adjustments crank the saturation all the way down to make it black and white and we can click done again and you'll see that the icon will change to the new information that we have just done. Well, that's the end of part two in the foundation series. In part three, we're going to go over opening the files into Photoshop and go over the interface of Photoshop and make some adjustments to the preferences so that you'll be able to work smoothly and efficiently inside Photoshop with your new files that you've created beautifully with Camera Raw. Until then, see you later.